Hey folks, I've been messing around with the projectiles in Unreal, and in addition to hopefully putting together a GitHub you can all download, I thought I would just walk you through uh, some of the things I've learned. So all of these explorations really grew out of this. And let me go over to the spectator cam so you can see a little bit of a better view of what I'm doing. Uh, the fact that, you know, for a while, I felt like if you do want to have projectiles in your game, hold on, let's pull that, that this is a, a perfectly fine starting point. It's definitely efficient, but it's not really ideal because, well, a few things. The projectiles disappear the moment they touch something. They can kind of nudge something forward. You know, there's some decent physics there. But, you know, what if you want these to bounce? What if you want them to shatter? What if you want them to interact with each other? Uh, you know, there's a lot more that could be happening here. So I wanted to dive in a little bit into what we could actually do. So let's take a quick look at some of the things that uh, are kind of your basic starting points, and then maybe we'll go beyond that if we have some time. So first thing we want to do is open up in VR template blueprints. We have kind of our two key players in this, our pistol as well as our projectile. So our pistol, just to walk through this a little bit, and I'm in Unreal Engine 5.3, everything looks a little different post uh, 4.27. Actually post 5.1 is when I believe all the enhanced input stuff got added into here. So you do want to be using at least 5.1 to follow along. Uh, but basically we have our input actions for shoot left, shoot right. They're both checking to see what hand we're in. We're getting the muzzle location, and then we are spawning this projectile blueprint from that muzzle location and playing the haptic effect. So by default, everything like the force that's coming you know, out of the, the muzzle and all that, that is all actually being handled on the blueprint, and there might be some reasons we might decide to change that. So let's dive in and take a look. So we open up our projectile blueprint. Here we've got a little bit more going on. So first, don't be confused. This is entirely about affecting other things. This little impulse, this has nothing to do with how the projectile itself moves. This is basically saying if you hit something that's simulating physics, like one of the rolly balls or one of the grabbable cubes, go ahead and add some impulse to it so it starts to move. Um, but that's all that's doing. So a couple things that we might want to change right off the bat is first of all let's not destroy it let's just break these and say no don't destroy when the projectile stops don't destroy when it hits something and also there's actually a life setting in here that we want to find down here in initial lifespan so if we just set that to zero nothing will die so we'll take this one step at a time let's see how that changes things if i press play go back to our less nauseating view <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to like reach under my desk. And now, a little bit different. <laughs> so these are now sticking to a surface. You know, there's something kind of interesting about that. I could imagine a scenario where you want a bunch of little sticky balls. Notice that they aren't stacking, they are overlapping each other. So that's, that's a thing, you know, that's a thing. Okay, so maybe that's a thing you want. And if so, fantastic, you're done. <laughs> but uh, maybe we want these to actually bounce and move around. So over in projectile, we'll actually see in our projectile movement that, and by the way, that's where I was looking at the other settings as well um, for things like life. Actually, no, that wasn't there. Um, so over in projectile, so over in the projectile movement component, this is actually, which is, <clears throat> so over in the projectile movement component, this is what's actually dictating most of the physics of what's going on here. If you look in sphere collision and static mesh, you'll notice that actually neither of those are set to simulate physics. That is actually being done entirely on our projectile movement. So we actually have a setting in here. Scroll down, scroll down under projectile bounce. We can just hit this checkbox that says should bounce and you can start to mess with things like friction and bounciness, and if the bounce angle should affect friction, do note, of course, that these all have a non-zero computational cost, so we are making this all more expensive to, uh, to do, but let's just see what that does now. Okay, so if I now go and I grab, we'll grab both of these this time, because we want to make a lot of these balls. Aha, they're bouncing. They're bouncing all over the place, doing all sorts of crazy stuff. But it's a little hard to see at the speed, but I want you to note that they don't actually interact with each other. And if we get enough of these balls, maybe bouncing back this way a little bit, you'll notice that they just kind of pass right through each other. There's no direct 
interaction. And if I shoot balls that are already on the ground, like um, let's try to tilt the camera down a little bit. So we can see some balls over here. And if I shoot these balls, like these two here are already overlapping. And if I shoot them, nothing happens. Nothing happens at all there, right? So that might feel a little bit frustrating. You probably want them to interact with each other. So there's a few things that are causing that. Uh, let's pop back into projectile and take a look. One of these is the fact that we have under our sphere collision, this is where all the collision is happening, nothing is happening over on static mesh. In our sphere collision, we wanna look at our actual collision settings. And so over here, we don't have simulate physics, again, that's intentional, but we do have under our collision presets that this is set to be a world dynamic object. And so if it hits another world dynamic object, what's it going to do? It's going to overlap it. Okay, and that overlap event is also uh, that's that's why they are not actually colliding properly. That's why they're inside of each other. But the other thing that's happening is that we have this little thing, this on projectile stop, which basically stops simulating physics after a certain amount of time or sorry, when when friction goes down a certain amount. And so if we look under our projectile bounce, we have bounce velocity stop simulating threshold. So once that velocity drops below there, we stop simulating. And even if I set this to zero, um, it's still going to stop. And you know, that's to make sure that we don't just have things um, simulating all over the place. Now we can kind of get around this a little bit. We can say, okay, well on projectile stop, how about we go ahead and we actually um, disable projectile movement because at this point it starts to get in the way. So we disable that component. We're no longer thinking about this as a projectile. Um, it's not disable, it's deactivate deactivate I can spell and then after we deactivate it then we want to start simulating physics on our sphere collision so the hope here is that then we can start to um, interact with this little thing where we're adding impulse which again that's what's actually making things move um, it's not the actual act of you know hitting something hard because this is a more efficient less computationally expensive thing we're just adding these little impulses so then on sphere collision we could do set simulate physics and say simulate so let's see what this does now isn't it nice to not be in a first person view so i can twist my head all around and it's not going to make you sick pretty cool okay so now we still got our bouncing knocking things around <laughs> nice job blasting the gun there alex and it's a little hard to see, um, but we are now actually interacting with the balls. The balls can still overlap, but I can hit them now, and they are actually going to move around, okay? So as long as you're okay with the balls still overlapping with each other when they settle, which, you know, doesn't happen all the time, and they can kind of like pass through each other as they're moving around the ground, that's, you know, okay. The, the key thing we're adding now is the ability to actually hit a ball and have that ball boop, you know get blasted with that little impulse okay now if you want to go beyond that and you actually want to add the ability to have the balls bounce into each other on the ground now we're kind of in a much trickier territory and then rather than showing you all the complicated things I, I went through to try to make that happen uh, instead I'll show you what is by far the simplest way to do this which is to just get rid of this whole projectile movement thing so you know you might want to uh, you know, duplicate this, back it up, call it projectile backup or, uh, you know, with projectile movement. Uh, because what we're going to do in the main one here now is just delete that. So we go into projectile and we just delete projectile movement, which is going to cause some errors. You know, this event no longer exists, but we also aren't going to need these things anymore. No worry about destroying the actors. Because um, now all we're going to do is we're just going to turn this into the same kind of thing as like the ball over here, for example. Like you can literally just scroll down and say like, hey, this ball, like if, if we just have a bunch of these balls, like watch what happens, watch what happens real quick. I'll just go to simulate and we'll see. Yeah, I know there's some errors. These balls just kind of bounce off each other and they can knock into each other and watch this, watch this, watch this. <gasps> yeah, see they bounced into each other and it started to push this one back. Now they're more like pool balls, right? So we want something kind of just like that, except with the added force. Now, again, this is more expensive. This costs more on your CPU to do this kind of physics simulation. So be aware of that. But notice that this is set to be a physics actor and that it blocks 
everything here. There's no overlapping. Everything is blocking because if you overlap, you can create events, you can trigger things happening like, you know, adding an impulse, but you can't actually bounce off of each other. So we basically want to do the same thing. We want to be a physics actor that blocks everything. So opening up projectile here, we're going to need a different way to get this velocity. Um, but, and this is all fine, this is all fine, but under sphere collision, again, sphere collision, not static mesh, now we want to simulate our physics, right? And then we want to scroll down to our collision. And now instead of world dynamic, let's just make it a physics body. And then it didn't change any of this stuff by default. So, you know, we can just do this manually. We can say block, block, pretty much everything that was set to overlap, we can now make it block. You know, if you want this to like not interact with the pawn or that kind of stuff, by all means, um, you can change it. But my goal is to just make this bounce off of everything. And then for velocity, so we can actually get the velocity of that sphere collision. We can pull off of here and say, get velocity. And we have that get component velocity, right? So then we have this and we can come off of there. And <laughs> I, I definitely have a couple more steps of what I need to do here, but I like showing you all this step by step. So let's see what this looks like. Because again, remember, this is just about adding a little impulse, you know, when, when this interacts with something else that's simulating physics. So let's see what's happening here. So I'm going to go ahead and simulate. Cool. I can zoom out a little bit here too, just to give us a wider view. All right. Go ahead, grab this guy, grab this guy. And ready, ready, blurp, blurp. <laughs> but that being said, oh, look, they are actually like blocking each other. They can knock other things over, although I don't think they have enough weight. You probably can't see, but like <laughs> it is shaking these, my little balls here, the, the, the cubes here. Um, but the key thing is that now these are more like, you know, how you think about something like pool balls. They're just kind of drooping out of here, but they are interacting, they're moving around. If they bounce off of each other, if you see anywhere where they're bouncing off of each other, they are actually, you know, passing energy from one thing to another. So this is a much more accurate, but again, much more expensive physics simulation. So just be aware of that. So final step in, let's call it this first video, I think we'll cover things like fracturing and breaking in another video, is we just want to get that velocity back. I really want to knock the cube over there just to show there we go there we go just want to show that like there's all interaction happening here in our big old physics simulation um i'm on an rtx 4090 by the way with a very powerful thread ripper so like i can handle a pretty robust physics simulation in here if you're on a laptop with a mobile 970 and uh you know an i3 uh you might have a little more trouble but yeah this is fun okay and i like uh seeing everything just kind of dealing with gravity and bouncing into each other and seeing some things like move around a little bit. Uh, that's all good stuff. So last thing is we just want to get back to having the, um, the impulse, that animation of literally animating of like shooting out of the muzzle. And so we're actually going to do this in the way, which is honestly how I thought this was originally working, which is to have that happen in the pistol. So if we open up the pistol blueprint, what we're going to do is when we spawn that actor projectile, coming off of here, we're actually going to add the impulse then. So we've got the projectile, and we're going to do add impulse. And we're going to do it not to the static mesh, but to the sphere collision, because that's where all the physics events are being handled. Um, as you might imagine, it's always going to be cheaper to deal with like a simple sphere collision than any kind of static mesh. Because, um, you know, even I, I'm pretty sure the difference between the sphere collision and the actual sphere is there's less geometry here, so there's less stuff to calculate. Let's move the haptic feedback over here. And then we just need to get an impulse, right? And we are going to change velocity. And the impulse is going to be coming from the muzzle. And then it just needs to be an amount. Now, if you want to know exactly the amount that we had when we had the projectile movement, um, well, it's good that we backed that up. We can just go ahead and open it up. And when we go on projectile movement, we can scroll down and see that we have 1,200 velocity. That's what was being shot out of the cannon here the moment that this spawns. And that would have been happening whether we were spawning it in space or coming out of the muzzle or out of our hand or out of our mouth. Whatever orifice this is coming out of, it's going to be going at 1,200 velocity out of the gate. So over on the pistol side, we want to do the same thing. And we just want to make sure the direction 
is correct. And again, make sure that we're connecting here to the sphere collision. And so the impulse is going to be the muzzle location. And we want to get exactly where that is. So we're going to get the forward vector of it. And we're going to multiply that forward vector by 1200 or whatever we want the velocity to be. So we can go times and then actually it doesn't even need to be this. It can be a float so I can convert this to a float. That's a fun thing that you might not know about. You can right click on things and say make it something else. And I could just do 1200 right here. And let's take a look at that. Muzzle location forward vector times 1200 to match the velocity before. And that's the impulse we're putting into the sphere collision of our projectile. Okay. Boop. Hello. Here I am rocking like a hurricane. And I'm gonna grab my gun there, grab my one over here if I can teleport closer. Try and navigate under my desk. And I know I'm building up so much anticipation. Ready? Three, two, one, blast. And here we go. So now we have pretty much exactly the behavior I was initially looking for, and it's much more computationally expensive. I should probably try to find the best way to show like some stats on this. But we're actually like having a real physics simulation here of these balls bouncing off of things. They're not disappearing. They are interacting with each other and the objects around them. And when they bonk into each other, where it's whether it's on that initial blast or when uh, they just roll into each other, there are some fun things happening. So there we go. I hope that's helpful. Just a quick flyby of some of the things I've been learning this morning. And uh, in the next video, I will show you how we can also start to break these using some basic chaos fracture stuff. So look forward to that and uh, see you next time. Cheers.